Hi everyone, how are you all? Welcome back to my channel. My name is Jana, I'm a nursing student at Sunshine Coast University and now at the moment I'm in my second year of Bachelor of Nursing Science. In today's video I want to do a comparison between a Diploma of Enrolled Nursing at TIFE and your um, RN degree of Bachelor of Nursing Science at uni. Um, it could be a little bit maybe weird comparison as it seems but I had a lot of people actually asking me under my nursing videos on my channel um, should I go to do my EN you know first or should I go to uni and just finish the whole degree you know and become RN you know how hard is the study you know at a type you know how long does it take and things like that and I thought to myself how about if I just do this comparison so people can see the load of the study what's happening during this two sort of courses and maybe decide by themselves but again when you ask the question it's not only about the Lloyd and the study itself it's who do you want to become in the end would you like to be an EN or would you like to be an RN so it's up to you but in this video I just give you the comparisons you know and you can sort of have a little bit of insight of what's happening in these two courses so if something interesting for you please stay on watching so for me I put again my points on my notebook so that I would stay uh, consistent and won't forget things so first let's compare the amount of units that you will have in two courses so if you look at TAFE, okay, at TAFE you will have three semesters. Each semester you will have from eight to nine units or subjects, okay, and that would be unchangeable. This is a standard sort of amount of units that you will have every semester. When you will look at uni bachelor of nursing degree, you will have per semester three units or three subjects and then fourth one will be your clinical prac that will be not a theory sort of subject it will be more practical when you will go to your clinical placement to the clinical facilities and conduct it either for three weeks uh, four weeks or internship for eight weeks in the end of your three years uh, program so the units that I had in my first semester, because as I said, I am a nursing student now in my mid-year of year two, so I just finished my first semester and I'm conducting now my clinical placement, so I have first semester and a beginning of second one to compare to because I already have enrolled into units in my semester two, and I did finish my diploma of enrolled nursing last December, so it's been like seven months ago <laughs> so it's all sort of relevant to me okay so in my semester one now at uni i had drug therapy unit health and alter alterations unit and i have my labs which is half theory half practice they are conducted in the campus and the fourth one which is your unit for your placement okay so this is the amount of units that you will have. Now, I did already enroll into my semester two and I have exactly the same amount of units. So as you can see between TAFE and uni, TAFE has more units per semester than uni does, okay? Next point, how many days will you be attending your campus? At TAFE, for my intake of students, for my course, it's been changed from four days a week to three days a week. So that means that the students who've been graduated Diploma of Enrolled Nursing just before my intake, they had still four days compulsory on the campus every week. When I started my diploma, they've changed it for some reason to three days a week. So all my course for my diploma, I was attending three days every week. For the lectures in my campus and then the fourth day it was still in a program but it became sort of like an individual learning where you should learn some reading materials or reading resources that were provided on a nursing database by type at your home it was not monitored in any way you didn't need to log in at that particular day or particular time and read some sort of amount of resources no it was just you could do it anytime as long as you stayed up to date and you read things that need to be read you know you're you're good to go so let's compare nowadays at uni at uni you will have a choice if with type they would just tell you okay you have three days a week 
you can either choose Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, let's say, or they will give you second choice, let's say, uh, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. That's it. At uni, you can actually choose times, days, and how many days you will go to the campus. And this you can do by um, sort of like choosing your units and times and days in your timetable. Let's say you know that you have three subjects to study this semester. In a timetable, they will give you that this subject can be, uh, you know, presented by the teachers on Monday at this time, can be presented on Tuesday, you know, at that time, then on Wednesday, Thursday and Friday, and it will be different times. If you're a person who's working or you have a family commitments, you can choose for yourself, okay, I want my drug therapy to be on Monday from 8 till 11. The next subject I have health, uh, um, health and alterations, for example. I've been given choices as well for all five days of the week, but let's say they had a choice there either in the morning or before lunchtime or after lunchtime. So if I have on Monday health uh, drug therapy from 8 till 11, I can choose my health alterations, uh, let's say from 11 till 2. You know, so I filled in my day by myself choosing the times and the days for the subjects that's comfortable for me. And then let's say I have uh, LEMS, which is three hour session. It has to be uh, conducted in a campus as well. Okay, I can choose either the same day and study and, you know, attend it after, from two o'clock, let's say till um, five. Or if it's too long day for me, I can actually move it and choose it on, to do it on Tuesday from 9 till 12 or from 8 till 11, whatever time block was offered for us as students. So as you can see, uni give you more flexibility to build your own timetable because they realize that a lot of people work, a lot of people have family commitments. So this is very, very comfortable. So what I've done for myself, I had two units on Monday until two o'clock, I was still able to actually even go to work if I wanted to pick up PM shift. And then Tuesday, I had my labs from nine till 12, okay? And then I went home or I went to work, it's up to me. So I have all the flexibility to still have a little bit of life, to have a little bit of, uh, you know, time for work as well, if I wanna do the same day. So yeah, next. Both courses will, will have assessments, quizzes, and prac exams. So you will find it in both of these courses. But uni will have some assessments or whatever you can call it that will be in a form of essays. So for me, for example, this semester, uh, each of my units, we had quiz on it, which has a certain grade of percentage that you have to achieve then we had assessment or a group work and then the last one was going to be either uh exam you know practical or written whatever and essay okay so for me i only had essay on drug therapy subject health and alterations didn't have an essay but it had a big assessment that would be almost in a length equal to essay, okay? So that would be the only difference that you will have in, you, in uni essays, whereas a type they will never give you essays. It will be just quizzes, um, assessments, and your practical exams, that's it. Um, also what I wanted to mention at uni, in your year two, you will have a bit smaller essays. Like for example, my essay uh, was, uh, the biggest one was 2,400 or 2,000 words, something like that. And I've, built, I've been told that for some of the subjects in my year three, I will have essays up to 3,000 words. So it's sort of like growing a little bit more. Once you start to learn more, your responsibility and your load will go higher a little bit as well. Um, unfortunately. <laughs> okay. Then in terms of studies, at TAFE, most of the things that you will be studying, or maybe I should say a lot of the things, you will be given sort of like, not in too much depth, you will have sort of like a highlights of certain topics. So you're not gonna go into much of depth. Whereas at uni, you will start to study pathophysiology, for example. At TAFE, you would be studying anatomy, you know, physiology, again, not too much in depth. 
but at uni you will start to do it already as pathophysiology so you will go more into cellular you know molecular and all of these levels you know in your body functions and stuff like that then you will start to pay more attention to study of drugs you know pharmacokinetics pharmacodynamics you know how the body reacts in to the drug you know what the drug does to the body and stuff like that so you will start to learn all of that more in depth how the medication interact with each other you know and things like that it's very 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 interesting but it's very hard at the same time so uh yeah, so I should say at TIFE it was a little bit <clears throat> easier in this, you know, in um, in this term because you did not go too much in depth. Whereas at uni, you will need to do more research, obviously. You need to do more reading books and stuff like that. You know, you need to analyze things and just put things together. So, um, so yeah, that's the difference in, of the, in terms of the materials. Next. Um, of course, you will have a wider scope of practice for your uh, Bachelor of Nursing degree because you here will be practicing at some point your RN. So you start in your first year and second year, sort of like you're learning things that Ian's learn at TIFE and then sort of you progress into RN, your scope of practice is wider. Whereas at, uni, uh, at TIFE, you're just doing only Ian and your scope of practice is uh, more narrowed. Okay, so when you go on a placement, this is where you will see the difference okay and also in a theory part as well you know Ian's they have their own standards for practice RNs they have their own standards for practice next um, let's compare the placement lengths so um, at TIFE my longest placement was four weeks so you will have three weeks blocks and you will have four week, weeks blocks at uni though again each uni is different. Sunshine Coast University has the longest internship, which is your last placement in your last semester of year three, which goes for eight weeks. Other unis, they have it for six weeks, okay? So this is like the longest ever I would experience, okay? I, I still have, have this ahead in my next year. But um, yeah, so at the moment, my placement now is three weeks. My next one in semester two is going to be four weeks and then I think it will go semester one in year three, four weeks again and then eight weeks final one, okay? So as you can see at TIFE, you have it a little bit, um, you know, like shorter ones. But again, it's a full-time shift. Like even at uh, uni now, I only have eight hours shift. Nobody put us on 10 or 12 hour shifts. The same as a type, you will have your standard shift, which is eight hour daily shift. Okay, layout of labs. I know a lot of people, even my students in the class, they were saying like always wondering, are the labs better at uni? Because uni you pay a little bit more, you know, it's more, I don't know, prestige or something, you know, um, but now I have to compare and I can tell you that labs at my uni are very, very similar to the labs that I had at uh, campus at TIFE. Same beds, same equipment, everything is still the same, really. It's just my scope of practice now is wider and I can do more clinicals in labs than if I was, than what, what I've done at Diploma of Enrolled Nursing. This is the only difference, but like everything else is the same. So yeah, it's the same, guys. Okay, your lengths. So Diploma of Enrolled Nursing at TIFE takes 18 months full-time study. And I think it will be double or something like that if you go part-time. But I've never done it, so I'm not going to be 100% sure about that. You can research it online. But for me, it was 18 months full-time study. At university, you will go for three years. This will have your EN sort of education in it and RN, you know, and you will become in the end as RN, okay? But technically, after your first placement in aged care, which is conducted in the end of your first year, you can apply as IANs okay whether to the hospitals or to HK facilities then later on um, when you be in your second year and stuff like this you won't be able to work as EM because you won't have actual you know um, certificate or diploma that you need to present to APRA for registration so some actually people ask me oh can I work as EM when I finish let's say two years of my studies no you can't because you won't be given any documents 
uh, you know, certifying that you have a qualification of uh, EM that you've studied. You know, you've just been like a sort of transitioning through your degree, but you don't have an actual document. So you have to wait until the end of your uh, degree and then graduate, you know, and have your papers in hand and apply for registration as RN. If you do want to work just as EM, then you have to go to TIFE and do your diploma of enrolled nursing and then you can get your diploma in your hands, apply for registration. Okay, so you need three years full-time, okay, TIFE 18 months full-time. Now, the price. Back in almost two years, uh, the price for my degree, uh, sorry, for pri the price for my diploma at TAFE was 21650 or something like that. Then it went down a little bit and recently when I was checking, it's sort of up again. So they tell you that every day they can, not every day, every year they can actually change the price. So this is something that we can't control as students. But if they do change the price while you're studying, they will do sort of like a um, recalculation for you and balance it up for you. Like you don't have to pay that full amount as when you started, because this is what happened to me when I started my diploma of enrolled nursing. But anyway, this is a different story. So um, at uni, you will have each year about seven to 8,000. Okay, In, at my uni, I think it's 7,600 or 800 per year. Okay, so these are the prices. So if you uh, calculate like adding about seven or eight, you know, for each uh, year, length of three years, you can see the difference from TIFE to uni, how much in terms of money you pay. Okay, uh, but also at TIFE, you can have, you can apply for something called subsidized study which will make your price a little bit lower and you can apply for vet student fee loan and at uh, uni you can apply for hacks okay so you can have a government support for that um which is actually the next point that i wanted to talk about so yes if you don't have money to pay so type they have sort of like a different loan system which is called a uh, vet fee student loan and uh uni they have hacks help Okay, so these are two different types of loans, but they work the same way. Like, actually, at TIFE, I had a gap that I needed to pay, and I think it was like six or seven hundred I needed to pay out of my pocket. Whereas at uni, your hacks cover you completely, you don't have to pay any gaps at all whatsoever. Okay, next, um, at TIFE, you needed to re enroll for each semester. I know it's crazy, right? But yeah. This is what we needed to do every semester. Semester ended, you have to go to the office or online and re-enroll again, okay? At uh, uni, you don't have to do sort of like a re-enrollment, but you have to uh, re-enroll yourself into new subjects for each semester. So you still stated in their system that you're ongoing student, but you have to pick for yourself subjects for the next semester, okay? So this is the only difference. Okay, referencing. At TIFE, we were using uh, APA references, referencing style. At uh, uni, and my uni, we're using Harvard's. And oh boy, <laughs> this is the worst thing ever. Literally, like, oh. If you do APA, it's straightforward. Whether you reference website or a book or whatever. Harvard, it's just insane, insane. Like journals, you have to reference in this way, you know, websites in this way, physical book this way, ebook this way. Oh, it's, it's just, they actually, for us students, they have sort of like a guide online for Harvard referencing style, and you can go and see each section. Okay, books, journals, websites, you know, videos, it depends what faculty you are in. Like for us nurses who can't reference videos, well, not advisable, and things like that. And then it's just like how to reference if you have many authors, like more than three or five, you know, and stuff like that. It's just commas, dots, and it's so precise. And you know what? If you reference wrong, it takes 5% of your grades. I know. From 5 to 10, actually. Yeah, it's, it's, it's really serious. It took me a while. <laughs> okay. Um, now, regarding your materials, when you look for, um, you know, resources for your assessments and stuff. At TAIF, 
teachers used to love us to use books, you know, Lewis's, Brown, you know, your fundamentals of nursing, your surgical medical nurse and stuff like that. They used to love us using these books and they are great books. Like, honestly, they are great books. I love them. I have them at home. They're not the, the latest editions, but they're still relevant and I do read them. I do actually go and refer for information in there, even for my uni. But with the uni, you will be told to use more, uh, you know, journal articles, peer review articles and stuff like that. They would love you to use articles for some reason, especially those ones that have been like not too long ago. They would tell you, oh, you can use something like five, seven years old, but they would prefer something like five, four, three, something like this. Something that's been, you know, new discoveries been made, you know, new suggestions and stuff like this. Oh, the teachers loves us use, love us using these articles. So that's the difference. Like, it was really funny to me, to be honest. Like, you know, I started my first assessment. So I was like, oh, yes, I'm going to use books. You know, I love my books. And then, like, we had a discussion on Zoom because this was already, um, you know, distant learning at that time when COVID hit and stuff like this. And the teachers told us, like, oh, we prefer you to actually use the journal articles. Like, oh. And I was half through through my assessment and I've used Lewis so much in it i love lewis's you know medical surgical nursing and i was like oh i have to now you know like search for more information you know from journal articles and stuff like that so yeah that's the difference but again from uni to uni i guess it's different i'm just judging from my uni you know i don't know how it's happening in, in different unis um they would also allow us to use website, government websites, you know, like copd.com.au or asthma.com.au or epilepsy.com.au. If you have certain conditions to discuss in your assessments or essay, they would be okay for you to use government websites. But yeah, that's it. Okay. Um, there is a good database called Clinical Key, which was super, super, super helpful for me when I was doing my diploma of EN. Okay, at uni, my uni doesn't have it. I've heard from my other friends who are in different unis, they do have it. For some, for some reason, my uni doesn't have it. Clinical Key database was included actually into payment of diploma of enrolled nursing at TIFE. Okay, we didn't need to pay out of our pocket, but at my uni now, I wish I could use it but it's not included. So I either go and I pay by myself yearly fees for it, or I just use USC online library, okay? Which mm, is not as great as clinical key in my opinion, but it does have some databases, medical databases that you can use. Okay, um, both of the uh, courses would provide for you physical library, okay? So campus of my uni and campus of TIFE, uh, they both have physical libraries, so you can go in and you can borrow books. Although, what I've noticed uh, was the same, is that the most wanted books, you know, or the latest editions and stuff like that, they would have only like in few copies. So it would be just like few samples only, so you will find those books either can be landed for you for one day only, or for only two hours of use in the library itself. And then if there is no demand on it, nobody, you know, requested it, you can prolong it for another two hours. So I've faced that with TIFE and I've faced that again with uni, you know, so not many books out in the library, especially like latest editions or even the edition before the latest one. You know, you will find heaps of books like seven years old, 10 years old, like heaps of them, but something that you can use for your assessments that's still relevant in a year, that would be not too much. Okay. Uh, ch -ch 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 -ch. buying books okay so at uni and at TIFE they will tell you you can buy or you cannot buy books it's up to you they will tell you like you're free to go and buy books you can use them throughout your degree or throughout your diploma but if you don't buy it it's okay you can still access you know certain uh, materials that they provide online like for example Okay, books that I had through TIFE, which was Lewis and Brown, Fundamentals of Learning and uh, sur Medical Surgical Nursing, I still use these books for my RN degree because all the information that is relevant to my degree now, it's not just written only for Ian's. 
so i've got them when i was doing my en and i'm using it now for my rn you know so the same as pathophysiology book you know you if you buy it while you're at uni you can use it through the whole degree i wouldn't say that you would be using it too much in uh type because we were not doing like pathophysiology we were just doing anatomy and physiology itself but it's a great book as well but again let's say um let's put it in this way at type we had a clinical key where we where we could access certain books okay at uni we don't have it but what we have at uni is on our student database which is a blackboard we have under each unit <clears throat> We have reading resources so what the teachers do for us they go to the same pathophysiology book and they scan for us particular chapters that would be relevant to for example discussion of copd you know so you will find that the whole chapter been scanned for you and you can actually use it if you want to add some information for it to your assessments or to your essays so this is really helpful and the same you will have in different subjects they would scan for you some books and that would be latest editions also, we have Harvard Nursing Guide to Drugs uh, available on USC library online as well. So that is freely accessible, you know. So yeah, so this is regarding the books, okay? You are free to buy them or not. Both of the facilities will give you this choice. Nobody going to push on you, you know, and tell you, oh, if you don't buy the book, I'm going to fail you on your exam or something like that. That is not gonna happen. Okay, uniforms. That's an interesting one. I was surprised. Okay, so at TAIF we had polo shirts and if you watched my previous videos, you know me getting ready for placements or something like that, you saw me wearing a black polo shirt with sort of like a red parts in it. So that was my EN shirt for my diploma of enrolled nursing that I needed to wear all the time I go to labs or to clinical placements. And I paid for it $39. This is the funniest part, you know, like comparing the prices. When I went to uni and we needed to buy our uniform and I knew that it was going to be scrubs, you know, so I went online, I was like 59 bucks. I was like, oh, 59. Why? Why so expensive? And you have to buy one that obviously has a logo of your, um, you know, uni, what are you studying at? So when you go to the placement, you will be recognizable that you, you're a student of this uni and stuff like that. And um, when I looked at the price, I was shocked, like... $59 comparing to $39, I was like, why, why, for what? You know, why so expensive? And you need to have two at least, because when you have your clinical placements, you don't know which ward you're going to, to be at. Maybe if they send you some, you know, like wards where people have infections, but any ward can have like, people can, patients can have sort of infection, can have virus, you know, or skin infection, something like this. So you need to finish your shift take your uniform off at home, you know, wash it and have a new one for the next shift because you will have your shifts in a row during your placements. So you will need to change your uniform every time you go on a new shift. So I was like, oh my God, so I have to buy two. It's like 59 each plus $15 postage or 10 for standard. So you can see the difference now in prices. It's <clears throat> quite expensive, okay? Uh, next amount of assessments okay i touched about it a little bit in the beginning of the video so i'll just but i didn't talk uh about this point um regarding type so at type for those eight to nine uh, subjects that you will have per semester you will have about four quizzes for some of them not all okay and then you will have mostly two assessments for each subject if it's not two some of them maybe have one, but it's going to be a super big one, like super long and big one, okay? If it's two, you will have one shorter one and another one will be big, long one, okay? So this is the majority what you will have, like the, the, the number of the assessments that you will have. And that will be every semester. So like each subject or unit will have up to two assessments, okay? Usually first assessments will be somewhere starting beginning or mid of the September, uh, semester. And then the last ones will be like June, maybe uh months after or something like that and they will have like a difference one week or something in between of each at uni i had uh two quizzes okay i had two assessments one was assessment was one uh, another like written assessment individual another one was written as well but a group work we needed to to be in a group of four or five people and we need to write assessment on a particular topic and then the third one one was essay another one was 
like I say, it was 1,600 words in total, but you didn't need to do like an uh, introduction, paragraphs, you know, conclusions, stuff like this. You just were um, answering questions, but they will tell you what they expect from um, those questions. Okay. And then exams at type, you will have your Oscar every semester. This is your half theory, half practical exam, and you will have once throughout your course exam for medication calculation which will be conducted in your second year or sorry second semester at type of uh, diploma of general nursing so that would be the only exam uh, so it will be exam for calculations once in the whole course and then each semester your oscar at uni you will have your practical exams in labs we supposed to have one practical one but then it was cancelled and it became written one because because of this COVID we went into distant learning and they changed it to be sort of like a written and half practical. We just needed to watch videos and catch the mistakes, you know, and then write out um, our um, thoughts about it. But I will talk about my distant learning of semester one in my next video to just, just let you know how it went for me in general. <clears throat> and then you will have also... Um, um, also, you will have another exam as well that we're supposed to have, but again, it was cancelled and we just had essays. So, if semester two is going to be a little bit different in terms of, you know, all this distant learning thingy happening because of COVID-19, I will tell you exactly how many exams I will have, but I think we're supposed to have like two or three exams on the top of the assessments and essay. So yet still, it's very similar to TIFE. You would have like two assessments plus a quiz or one of those assessments will be assessment and essay for each subject, okay? And each of them, each one of them will be graded differently. Next, uh, the length of the labs. Uni and TIFE would have exactly the same hours of the labs, so it's three hours standard. The only difference is that when we used to be at TIFE, those three hours were straight, we did not have any breaks, you're allowed to go to the toilet if you need to, but you can't take a break to go, like for example, eat something, you can go to drink water, <clears throat> but not to take actual break, whereas at uni, after half, uh, after one hour and a half, you can have a break for, I think it's half an hour they give us, and then you conduct another uh, one hour and a half, okay? So that's the only difference, but the length is still the same of your labs, okay? And you still need to wear your uniform, whether you are at TIFE or at uni, when you have a day for labs, you have to come in your nursing uniform, the one, exactly the same one that you wear into your clinical placements. <clears throat> okay, um, what else? In both uh, courses, you will have online resources available for you, uh, given by your uh, either TIFE or uni. So as I mentioned before, uni does scanners for us uh, of their books and stuff like this. They put for us in, so that would be reading resources. Then the other uh, part of database is called learning resources, when we will have slideshows, you know, like a PowerPoint, we will have videos, you know, we will have articles. So that would be all provided by the teachers. At TIFE you will have exactly the same, they will be sending you government websites, you know, PDF files, videos showing you how to practice IM injections, you know, <clears throat> uh, subcuts, oral medications, you know, IDCs and stuff like that. So all of that will be given to you on both databases and TIFE would have databases as well. So that is very similar. Okay, now great grades. Um, TIFE would just tell you whether you passed or you didn't pass, okay? If you've done a mistake in uh, assessment, they, or a few mistakes, okay? It doesn't mean that you out of the course and you've been kicked out and that's it, like <laughs> the life is ended, no. They will give you a chance to redo it, so they will send you a feedback once you submitted your assessment and they found mistakes, they will send, send it back to you together with the feedback and they will tell you which questions to review again and they will tell you what's been wrong there, you know, to sort of like guide you and indicate you what exactly you need to fix and do more research on specific parts. At, um, <clears throat> at uni, we have grades. 
okay we don't have just pass not pass we have grades so they will tell you for example that for this essay or for this assessment you need to reach for uh, 40 percent okay for quiz <clears throat> you need to reach let's say 20 percent and for the last part whether it's a assessment or essay you need to reach uh let's say remaining 50 or 40 so if you you know conclude them all so 20 plus 40 gives you 60 another 40 give you 100 so you need to reach in the end 100 to sort of like pass that unit okay so that's the only difference so you will have grades with uni okay it's not really hard like up on this point this moment i did not fail or did any mistake in my uh assessments in my uh, feedback I I was actually stated that I could do this and this in this and this way or, or research more but I was not said like by any of the teachers that I've done something wrong or I completely like drifted away in my um, discussions in my assessment and, and I was completely discussing something unrelevant to the topic you know of my discussion so this didn't happen with me but I, I'm still at the moment waiting for my biggest assay results and my last uh big assessment results as well so i'm waiting for that fingers crossed so everything is fine and i will reach my percentage that i need to reach in total you know but uh yeah hopefully it will be all right but i'll keep you updated so i think this is the only things that i wanted to discuss as i said i wanted to make this video short i don't know how many minutes i film but hopefully it's not too long and if i've forgotten something please ask me in the comments below and i will gladly answer it because i'm a human and i do forget things you know so but uh, yeah in general if this video was helpful for you i'm so happy you know and uh yeah if you like my videos please subscribe and like it and i'll see you in my next ones bye